If you're looking at this video, chances are you've come from the previous video in this series all about creating droplets. Just in case you haven't, very quickly, I have got a whole load of files here which I created using a droplet. They're all square, they're all 101 by 101 pixels. And I need to take those and put them onto a series of sheets to send off to my client. And I need them to go into this folder, which is currently empty. Right, let's get started. Photoshop. Come down to File, Automate, Contact Sheet 2. Now, depending on what version of Photoshop you're using, you may or may not have Contact Sheet in that location. For some reason, it always used to be there, and then through a couple of different iterations of Photoshop, that CS4, CS5, I'm not sure which versions, all of a sudden they put it into the Legacy folder. If you can't find it on your version, take a look in the Legacy Plugins folder. You should be able to find it there. Now, I need to set up some settings, and they have to be very particular with this, because I'm using this to do something it wasn't really designed to do. What Contact Sheet was there for was, for if there was a photographer, they had various images, they had to put them all onto one sheet of paper so they could send off to the client for their records, whatever. So, and it's called a Contact Sheet. First thing I need to do, I need to choose where the files I want are. Now, in this case, they're in a folder called Cropped, and I click on that, that's Cropped, okay, that's okay. Include subfolders, there's no subfolders there. I don't want to make my life difficult. Next thing, document. Originally, this was in inches. I need this to be in pixels, and I want a file size of 1024 wide by 768 high. And this is important, pixels per inch. Originally, this was on 300. I want this to be 72 pixels per inch. Now, 72 pixels per inch, this was from quite a long time ago when presumably somebody took a measurement of an inch worth of an old-fashioned computer monitor and found out that there were 72 pixels in that inch. Nowadays, of course, you get different size monitors, different resolutions, so 72 pixels per inch is a little bit arbitrary, but we want that there. Okay, next thing, RGB color. Yep, that's fine. That's the format my BMP files are in anyway. Bit depth, 8-bit, that's fine as well. Color profile, doesn't make much difference to me. Flatten all layers, yes, I definitely want to do that. Because otherwise, I'll end up with an image which has got, what, uh, 70 different layers to it, which I'd have to flatten myself. It saves me a little bit of time there. Now, the thumbnails. What it's going to do, it's going to create a file which is 1024 by 768, 72 pixels per inch, and it's going to place my images onto there and they're going to go across first yeah that's fine i don't want auto spacing on i want them I want them to go 10 along by seven down so columns 10 rows seven vertical and horizontal i've chosen one pixel by one pixel use file name is caption no i don't want captions there so i'm going to leave that alone and now now that i've done it i'm going to press ok Now, if we come over to the Layers palette, you can see all these layers are being created. You can't see anything that's going on the screen at the moment, but you're getting all the files from the cropped folder laid out onto images. We'll come back to this when the computer's done. And we're back, and in that time, I've now got 12 contact sheets, and you can see all my files are all laid out in a regular order. That took about seven minutes. You can see they're all there. That would have taken me, well, to do the cropping plus putting them all down there, it would have taken me a long, 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 long time. Okay, so when you send this off to a programmer, they have to work out where all these individual images are in relation to the big sheet. Once they've done that with one, it'll be the same for every single contact sheet, every single one. That is going to save a ridiculous amount of time from them as well. So everyone's a winner with this. Now, this is all great, but there's a few gotchas with this, and I'll go through that. If you're working out your contact sheet and the size or whatever, what I suggest you do is you create a new folder called test. And I'm going to take some of my cropped images. I'm only going to take about, say, 24. Copy 
and enter test. The reason I'm doing this is because you do find you have to do quite a bit of tweaking about of the figures within contact sheet to make sure you get the right results. I'll show you what I mean. OK, I'm going to get rid of this last file. Don't need to save it. I'm going to come down again to Contact Sheet 2. And now I'm going to choose Test. OK, all my settings are as they were before, but now I'm going to, for example, change this back to its original resolution. Uh, and I'm going to start rendering these out now. Now, the reason I've only got 24 files there, if I was to run it through the full 828 files, it would take ages to do my test. As it is now, it's all there. It's all ready for me to test. But now I want to take a look. Come down, so take a look there closely. Because the sizes are slightly off, instead of getting a hard, crisp edge there, Photoshop has taken my image and it's kind of sized it a little bit incorrectly, so I'm getting all these kind of dark grey through to green anti-aliasing problems there. Now that's going to look terrible in my actual file. I'm going to close that. If I change it, if I come down to contact sheet again, OK, I'm going to make that 72 pixels per inch, get rid of that problem. OK, I chose a file size of 1024 by 768, but if I change this to 11 columns along instead of 10 and click on OK. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. OK, I've got 11 there. Let's come and take a look at it again. And again, I've got anti aliasing problems there. If I come to my rule tool and I'll measure the width of this, the original was 101 wide. Now this, if I come up to the top, I can see now the new width is about 92 pixels because I'm trying to cram too many along the top row. When you're using contact sheet, it is a case of deciding what you want your final contact sheet file to be and then working out what's going to work. Now in, the ca in this case, it was 10 by 7. Now when I did this, all those years ago, I worked backwards. I eventually arrived at 10 by 7 with vertical and horizontal spacing, one pixel wide by one pixel. You change any of these numbers around, you're going to get the fringing effect. OK, so you've got to do quite a bit of jigging about with this to try and find the size that you want. Now, when I first did this, also I had one or two large aeroplanes to do. They wouldn't fit inside a 101 by 101 box. So for that, I would use the same file size, 1024 by 768. But by trial and error, and using that test folder, I worked out that if I placed things so that they were six along by four down and the actual with a vertical and horizontal of one pixel by one pixel, if I had a box size of 168 by 168, then that would work as well. It's all a case of jigging around these various different files. Golden rule, make sure your resolution is 72 pixels per inch. You are using this for something that it wasn't really designed for, but used in conjunction with droplets, this saved a huge amount of time while making Rollercoaster Tycoon 2. It really, I think it must have saved months off our production time, and of course time is money. So I was very happy. I didn't have to do all that drudgery. Chris was happy as well. He was getting the files in a regular spacing, so he didn't have to work out the actual spacing himself or reposition everything on the actual file. Once you get it there how you want it, it's a great, great way to work. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes Store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.